Welcome to Arcade Attack. A retro gaming podcast for up to four players. Welcome listeners to another Arcade Attack podcast. I'll be your host for the evening. My name is Dylan. I'm here with Rob. Hey, hey. I'm here with Adrian. <laughs> I'm always here. You can never get rid of me. No, I love it. I'm here with Keith. No Keith. <laughs> Still no Keith? Still no Keith. Oh, I'm Keith. here with Kev. Still no, no Tumbleweed. <laughs> <laughs> I feel kind of sorry, sorry for Keith that he's missed this because... It's a musical-themed podcast. Yeah, when you told me we were doing this, I was sure Keith was going to be leading this. I'm sure... Well, I, 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 what? What? Are you telling me because just because Keith buys every data discs and every LP of game music imaginable, I can't do a game music podcast as well? Oh, what's, what's going oh, on there? I'm a bit confused. I don't know about can't, but I expected this to be his kind of field of... <laughs> I like. I thought he would have been the one who came forward and said, "I want to do one about this." I feel like we may miss his insight on this podcast a little bit, but you know, we 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 can get by. We can get by. So, the reason for this week's podcast is to, I suppose, to teach you both about Chip Tune. Ah, oh, yeah, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, the classic NES game <laughs> that was released. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. We're doing Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, right? Chip, Chip, Chip and Dale. Dale. <laughs> Chip and Dale music. Yeah, man, you, you got it. Okay, carry it's on. It's a classic of the uh, ca- cartoon intro genre, the Disney cartoon <laughs> intro thing. Chip, Chip, how Chip and how many copies of, one. of Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers were sold on the NES? It was developed and published by Capcom, by the way. You're being hijacked, Dylan. <laughs> no, hold on. No, I'm, I'm going with it. I'm going with it. Yeah. Um, 2.5 million. Good guess. Lower. 58,000. Higher. 100,000. 1.2 million copies. Why was Decent a popular game, game. actually? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dylan. Okay, so Chip and Dale music. Okay, so that's one guess, but I'll say no, politely. <laughs> I thought it would be one of two things. Okay. <clears throat> I thought either it would be uh, actual bands doing cover versions of old kind of game music. Okay. Then once I did a monicum of research into it, I realized it was literally the other way around. Uh-huh. He's got you. He's got you. <laughs> um, well, any more stupid guesses? Come on, I'm liking the stupid guess phase of. of Literally, podcast. just said it's the other. <laughs> Come on, no, but is it know. when you get a bag of McCain chips and you try and like use them as a keyboard or like a drum? McCain music? chips or <laughs> making a tune out of chips. <laughs> <laughs> Rob had fish and chips earlier. He did. What kind of music would those chips have made? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so Chip Tune, also known as Chip Music, is synthesized electronic music, which is made from programmable sound generator chips used in vintage computers, consoles, and arcade machines. Thus, from microchips. Love that. Not McCain, but microchips. <laughs> Not um, Chippendale Rescue not Rangers. Not Chippendale <laughs> Rescue Rangers. Um, it also encompasses tracker music, um, where essentially you've got a grid, line up some samples and such, and then it just rattles through the grid and then plays said samples. Um, it actually also encompasses, apparently, the Amiga's mod format, Music, which you knew, which you know, I used to love making back in the day. You were the oh man. If you wanted some music made in the Amiga, Dill was your man. Do you know? I think one of my finest moments was to hack the mod file on Flashback on the Amiga, which wasn't hard, <laughs> and to make a dance, make a dance tune out of it. I took the Flashback theme music and made a dance tune out of that. That is that is essentially chip tune. Can you splice that into the episode when we actually put it out? Yes. Oh, oh no, because it's lost to the archives. Oh no! Sorry, it is lost to the archives. I can get the flashback intro music, of course, but that won't be the same. Could you what? not just remake it? Oh, stop! Stop giving me <laughs> things to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, so chip tune, chip tune. Um, 
this is the point where I was going to hassle Keith about data discs. So, man, <clears throat> man loves man loves game music. I mean, like I like the data discs. I think they look great. I think they sound really good. Actually, it's live. I haven't actually listened to them, but I assume they sound really <laughs> good. Well, Keith will never play us any of them when we go around his house for some um, reason. He does if you're really lucky. If yeah. you're re- if you turn up really early, so say if he has something around his house at like six o'clock, if you turn up there at like four o'clock, yeah, he'll like put some on for you. You live nearer to him, also. This is his, true. Ha- his house is really hard to find. Plus, he, <laughs> like, he likes Dylan more, so he always, of course he's gonna play with Dylan. <laughs> Keith, Keith lives in a similar place to Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Like they wouldn't be able to find Keith's house. Like <laughs> it's in like a tree somewhere. But my but my a point I was originally gonna make is those are expensive discs. Like they're, they're like twenty quid each or something. It's basically, the same price, give or take, as a new rec- a new album that comes out on vinyl. Well, that's that's the thing. I was flummoxed like the other day when I went into HMV. Yes, HMVs still do exist around the country. Uh, less and less all the time. Less but, and yeah. less. An LP album is like twenty five quid. And I uh, okay. Yeah. Also, I'm not. Don't know if I'm on board with a lot of the new. So I know we're going off on a, mat, a huge tangent we here. We like tangents. We like tangents on Arcade Town. Yeah, I don't know if I'm a big fan of uh, the recording. A lot of new LPs, like I think if you actually get the original issues from the 60s, 70s, some of them sound great. Like, mm. But I don't, th- I don't know, like a lot of the new reissues are done from digital sources. But see, sound engineering flat. of LPs is so good now. They don't sound that much off. They just sound a bit warmer than CDs. They don't. You don't get the crackling. You don't get the hissing. You don't get the, like the not. You know, LP players are better now, and they're just better at making. Them. But my point is that um, it's taken from a digital source, so it's yeah. still it's not as ex- expansive. Yeah, sound you're not kind using field, analog equipment exactly yeah, yeah. as the old mm-hmm. stuff. Which and I don't know if either of you li- like listen to much kind of secondhand vinyl, but nope. stuff like uh, reggae folk, like old soul fantastic on vinyl much better than um on cd like i've heard the same thing about classical i don't know enough about it but Mm. yeah apparently so fair enough good to know well there you go see sometimes tangents work out on arcade attack podcast we've just not often but sometimes um (laughs) well okay so i'll go around to endeavoring trying to explain uh chip tune to you guys so it's not the same as just hooking up a keyboard and just loading up a sample into a keyboard and then whacking out some things. This is essentially programmable music. Do either of you want to hazard a guess as to when, what year, the first computer that actually made a programmable sound was made in? Game-related? Just ever. We're talking in the history of computers. 70... Seven? Seventy-seven, okay, yeah, okay. No, I think... Seventy-nine. Seventy-nine, okay. It's going to be much closer. earlier now, isn't it? Oh, it's closer. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, Wikipedia. 1951. Say what? Yeah, this is crazy, right? So, the CIRAC, uh, the CSIRAC, Australia's first computer, actually, in 1951, and also the Ferranti Mark One, which was a... Um, computer here in Manchester. Um, we used to perform real-time synthesized digital music in public. They were both the size of a room. So um, Adrian is sitting adjacent to my kitchen. Um, if you can imagine, it's something like ten foot by ten foot. That's that's like half the size of these computers. I've I've seen one of these computers. Not maybe not the specific one, but I've been to a museum. Um, I think near Sandhurst. I don't know where it was exactly, but Mm. when I went to see my uncle and he took me to this museum and these computers were the size of a room and, um, you know, it's amazing seeing these things in the flesh. Did it have like lots of tape spools and kind of speedometer type dials and measuring things? (laughs) He had lots of buttons and knobs. That's all I'm going to say. Oh my God. I bet it (laughs) it just, it just, it just loads of flashy lights. Like, like these flashy lights, they flash twice, <laughs> and then they flash three times in a row. And then, like, it's making that. noise like bleep bloop, <laughs> and like <laughs> bloop 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 bleep bloop, <laughs> bleep bloop, man. But nineteen fifty one. Wow. So if we're gonna talk about chip tune, really, and just noises made from computers, nineteen fifty one, guys, that's mental, right? Mm. How mental is that? No, not that mental. Mm. Okay, I don't, I'll carry crazy on. mental. I carry on. <laughs> yeah. But, so the the way that this is all put together 
is through something. I'm going to get too much into the technicalities of it. Oh, no. So I'm, I'm just trying to sell you guys on Chiptune as opposed to trying to be a, a, you know, fountain of knowledge about these kind of things. But it's all about waveform generators. Do either of you know what I mean? No. No. Um, I can hazard a guess. It's essentially like a sh- shapes created by programming that have different pitches and um, tones. So you didn't want. <laughs> didn't but, want me to take a guess. Go, no, sorry, oh, sorry. <laughs> you, was, that was you. Were, you were going to guess though. That was you were going to go that way. Yes, you were going to go that way. <laughs> um, but as as you know, yes. So you've got <laughs> you've got um, four main shapes, as it were. You've got pulse. Mm-hmm. You got sawtooth, which I guess is like when your tooth falls out. I got sawtooth. Tooth. Are you I'm a going sawtooth? To the sawtooth, yes. <laughs> but saw S A W. But I get what you mean. I, there. Uh, yeah, what so, you mean yeah. there. Triangle, which I think is Bing. yeah, triangle, yeah, and noise, noise, random noise. Those sound yeah. really familiar. I'm pretty sure I've like yeah, because it's used in synthesizers. Yeah. So not just like in for these waveforms and things, and for certain computers that are consoles that i'll go on to in a moment but yeah it's like standard synthesizer we talk about so user kashiro and all the other guys who did the the early other stuff that comes into something called frequency modulation synthesis so that's slightly different from the chiptune area i'm going to demonstrate to you guys and obviously the listeners at home today so that was all through yamaha's amazing synthesizers back in the day thus with keyboards and other bits and pieces so, but we're talking about just programming tunes. Got it? Yeah. We're programming tunes. Mm-hmm. Um, can you guys hazard a guess, thinking about 8-bit, 4-bit computers, consoles, can you hazard a guess of what the probably the two most common um, consoles and computers used for chiptune these days? I don't know. Can we this time? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I just I was just on a bit of a roll earlier. Sorry, you're gone. Uh, these days, I'd say the NES must be one of them. Or, I guess, yeah. And I'd more. say the Game Boy. Okay, NES and Game Boy. Adrian goes... Well, I was going to say Amiga, but that's not really in your bracket, is it? Um, it's, Amiga's a good guess, but I did say it's slightly, obviously, yeah. detached from what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, but, sorry. Um, yeah. Well, the NES, yeah. Um, maybe even the SNES. They got, they got a good sound chip, didn't they? SNES, yeah. But then again, I think SNES then falls into the um, frequency modulation. But right, right. the sixteen bit stuff kind of falls into okay. the, that kind of category. But what Rob was right with Game Boy. Game Boy. Yeah. People are making um music on the NES as well. Yeah. Master I know, system. Look at your face. <laughs> your face is like what? So people are like doing what? Um The beloved Commodore sixty four. Yeah, baby. Oh, I could have guessed that if I'd thought about it. Ah, see? <laughs> see, it's just amazing. So for the time, um, so the, the distinguishing is, so you've got, um, so the Game Boy has, obviously, these basic waveforms. So it, yep. I think you can do only like one of them at a time. It's only got one channel. So when you notice like Game Boy music, it's never, it never has, they never have like bass. <laughs> It's just all kind of one kind of tune and it kind of merges into something else, right? Yeah. So the Commodore 64 has three channels, right? And it uses something called the MOS technology SID chip, SID chip. You must have heard this around. People always talking about this SID chip. Apparently, when the Commodore 64 came out, it was like one of the most advanced sound chips there was ever made. Wow. Yeah. So what it does, you can actually, um, it can switch between all of those waveforms on three different channels and you can do like bass and like beats and stuff as well at the same time. Nice. So, yeah, okay, you can play stuff on a Game Boy, but you can add different layers to it by adding some C64 stuff over the top. Wow. Hmm. Am I intriguing you now? I wonder. So you they use both for single tracks. So chiptune, um, and I, again, I've dug around on... Um, Wikipedia a bit, has experienced moderate popularity in the 1980s and the early 2000s. And moderate popularity. And primarily the, the tools were a C64 and a Game Boy. <laughs> yeah. Wait, together or separately? Were they... Yeah, that's what I was asking. 
Together, my friend. To get, would you? Well, could you imagine how these two machines mixed together? Well, it's why a- stop at two? Why not have multiples all like overdubbed on top of each other? Why not have the Game Boy, NES, and C sixty four all in some crazy <laughs> orchestra? Well, I mean, why not have multiple C sixty fours and multiple Game Boys? Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely it. Because- why not? Ask Jeff Goldblum for his fly machine, put all the consoles together, chuck it in the machine, and make him some weird mutant hybrid. I've like the fly, like oh the God. fly, the fly slash Sid chip, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the flea Sid chip. <laughs> <laughs> but it's you know the the actual techni- um, the technique and the technicalities behind it are again a little bit beyond me. But I've had a look at some of these programs, and there are certain bands. Um, and groups who play these Game Boys, NESs, C64s to real life audiences. Friend of ours, Rob Hubbard. We like Rob Hubbard. Rob Hubbard, right? Obviously, we love his Road Rash stuff. We love his EA stuff. What he's mostly known for, and obviously I was going through his Kickstarter and everything, is his C64 music. The stuff he made using the SID, the SID chip. So this is his kind of thing. This is his kind of jam, man. Mm. But it's like when when you hear this stuff, and, you know, this all links to a sort of a brief album review that we're going to do in a little bit. And I'm going to going to play you guys um, a little excerpt of something that has been passed my way. Um, you know, it's just it can just be a, an amazing live experience. And also it's brand new retro gaming as music for us. And we love retro games. Mm. Do we? No, we do. Of course we oh, do. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No. Of course we do. <laughs> so you, I was going to ask something, but I thought you're probably going to move on to it anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, when you talk about kind of chiptune bands and chiptune music, uh-huh. are we talking about things that are like actual kind of popular music, same structures? Or is it something that's more to do with like the games where it's repetitive kind of things there isn't much value i found just having a look around in chiptune there isn't much value for replicating old chiptune music i know i don't mean that i mean like when they're kind of producing new music Mm. is it along with this is it the same structure as traditional game music or is it close to the true like structure of say popular music or is it something that's completely different wow it, it can be everything it can like there's a whole spectrum of chiptune. It doesn't. The thing is, it it is programmed music through SID chips, through Game Boys, through the hardware, and it's not something. It's something that can tailor every um, genre. I think mostly uh, chiptune is credited with aiding the development of electronical dance music. Easy to see. I mean, just off the top of my head. Experience by Prodigy, um, <clears throat> a countless other things that you know might have been influenced by Chip Tune. Um, I think the Killers and stuff and things. There was a bit to the early two thousands. They were putting like eight bit samples and things on their music. It's you know it's it it can it has a whole it stretches because it's again it's the I think it's the nostalgia element of it and also it, it's catchy man. How many like those four bit eight bit tunes were just incredibly catchy? The Tetris theme tune. No, that's Mario. that was one of them. But that was what I was going to say. I was going to say Super Mario Land as well. Like, yeah, you know, it was. You know, it's all these kind of. You know, but Tetris is, I think, an example of actual chiptune music in the sense that those were not original tunes; they were versions mm. of uh, Russian kind of yeah, classical and stuff. And they managed to obviously pin it down. But that shows you. Uh, okay, it demonstrates the initial versatility of chiptune. So you can just make a four-bit version of anything if you want. I think a lot of these bands do, but I think a lot of the chiptune scene now is original music. Mm -hmm. It's trying to make their own sort of catchy riffs. It's not about paying homage or doing cover. Oh, my God, not like awful like lounge covers of songs and things like that. It's nothing like that. You don't like Richard Cheese? I don't like, oh, my, what? Who? He's Richard Cheese. Who's Richard Cheese? It's like the guy who puts out all those uh, lounge core albums of stuff like... Uh, Nirvana and Rage Against the Machine and I'm assuming Radiohead. I'm probably give him a slap, but no, that's okay. No, I I actually hate. I uh, heard on them some Lloyd's TSB, no, some Lloyd's Bank advert the other day. Um, oh, lounge. This is a and, tangent. Yeah, this is a real tangent, but <laughs> I just really hate lounge version, lounge versions of Nirvana. You could and almost argue like, you, you have a real chip on your shoulder if you listen to that music. <laughs> hey. Oh, there he is. 
Where have them puns been, bro? Where have them puns mm. been? I think uh, I'd rather have retro versions of stuff, even if it's that terrible <laughs> version of Ain't Nobody and that holiday ad. I'd rather have that than Ain't having... Nobody. That is the worst song ever. Oh. It's like, hey, let's take a song and remove all the soul from it. Let's like, remove all the soul from but, it. Um, no, yeah. I was going to say, I still prefer those to the ads where people are reciting poetry. Oh my god! Yeah, seen that in multiple okay. ads now. Yeah. Oh no! Oh, the nationwide ads. No, no, no. Oh the no! Ads. Stop it! Stop it! Please, will someone for the love of God stop? Um, mm -hmm. But you know, chip tune is still popular today. You know, like these al um, the these artists play to you know audiences you know in their thousands. You know, this is this is not. This is not a small thing. In their thousands? In their thousands, bro. In fact, I will just say, um, just as an interlude to the review we're going to do this evening, um, on March 16th, 2012, in the Smithsonian American Art Museum's The Art of Video Games. Here we go. Exhibit featured a chip music soundtrack and the entrance at the entrance by artist Commuter. No, no, Computer. Computer, <laughs> sorry, and 8-Bit Weapon. 8-Bit hey. Weapon. That's so, an art event. It's not a dedicated gig. It's a dedicated gig. It is. It's like saying someone who like played it, played it at a festival, it's first but up it, on the bill, played to like yeah. 50,000 people. Anyway, just take it from me that people love this stuff. Anyway, so um, now that I've enticed you to um, chip tune... Uh, I will say that something's been passed my way, and I'm a fan of said 8-bit weapon, is their new album titled... 8-bit weapon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a self-titled album. It's a self-titled album. It's a great name for a band. Why not? Yeah. Know? Is this going to be one of those things where we aren't allowed to say anything negative about it because we're going to do an interview with them? Well, no, you can say things negative about it if you want. But what we're going to do, because you guys obviously haven't heard this album before, I'm going to play you some excerpts of said album and also to the guys at home. Um, so we're going to play um, something there. Do you guys... What what kind of... I mean, this album is more like video game music. Okay. So do you want something up tempo something down tempo what kind of thing do you want to start with and then i'll see if i can find something for you let's start up tempo let's, let's, get, let's tempo. get the beats going is yeah. that your favorite kind of album the one with the uh, up tempo beginnings yeah yeah so here is the first track from the album dungeon crawler baller and you guys can tell me what you think afterwards okay here we go So there you go. That was um, your first sort of introduction to Chip Tune. What do you reckon that? Do you know what it sounded like to me? Oh. 
the IT crowd intro. Oh yeah. <laughs> that one. Yeah. But yeah. no, it's alright. Like, um I yeah, I I quite like I don't know if I'd listen to a whole album, but I, yeah, I quite liked it. I well, could, you're gonna listen to a lot more because you're <laughs> <laughs> I mean like, if that was a theme tune to something, I could you know, it I'd be fine with that. I can imagine it being like in an Edgar Wright film. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they've only used about three, four channels there as well. So I think that's quite a lot of depth I, there. I think it takes a lot of skill to do that. Um, what I'd say is, though, when you listen to that music, you almost feel like you should be playing a game. You should be playing a game when you're listening. What, does it just make you want to play games? Yeah, kind of. And it makes me want to play kind of a, maybe a side scrolling and shoot em up, like an R-type sort of game, maybe. Uh, I, I reckon that music would go well with that. I did, I did enjoy that. I think uh, I was thinking more of a Castlevania vibe. That kind of thing, maybe yeah. not like the that kind of game, but no, I think like the those two bits together, like which would you which were like the Game Boy, which were the Commodore. 64? Well, this is the thing. So the Sid gives you the the kind of the base and the kind of the da, da, no 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 yeah da, 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 da. so like so like a Game Boy couldn't do that without sounding really tinny and not doing anything <laughs> else. So I think what, what 8-Bit Weapon are trying to do with this album is to try and explore the kind of sounds that the Game Boy can make, but obviously, um, you, you know, try and round, you know, give it a bit of a rounded edge with the Sid. You know, it's not... If, if you just had a... It'd be hard just having one channel of Game Boy music, you know, original music. That would be that would be true. But I think yeah, the Sid, the Sid does give it a different, you know. It's hard enough having to listen to an extra Game Boy. Oh, it, Rob, you went there. Why, man? Would you? Would you think like Game Boy tunes are just for nostalgia purposes now? Would you? Would you not like sit down and listen to them? Would you not like just sit down and play Game Boy and enjoy the music? No, I'd rather be listening to my own music. That's fair enough. I mean, not music I'm making, but like, you know, that is fair just enough. out of my phone or whatever, headphones. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, as as a comparison then, so th- th- this album, it's only seven tracks long. Um, one qualm I would have about the album is that it's too short. But there is just a pure Sid version of Dungeon Crawler Baller. And let's listen to a bit of that, and you can actually see the difference. So that was essentially the Sid version of the same track. So, like, I mean, I, I mean, like, it sounds better coming out of a laptop or whatever, like the format they're putting out on, than it would have done in the original C64, though, right? But the C64 was through a TV. Like, okay, <laughs> if if you had, I can't remember if the C64 had an had an an augs out on it, but I'm pretty sure it, it would sound. Mm. That, I'm, only three tracks have been used. That you can see, there's like the bass, the beat, and then the tune over the top. So it's it's not beyond the realms of possibility that that could have been on a C64 game. You know, yeah, 
is chip tune taking it to another level? Maybe because there's more guys who specialize in this. Not like like eight bit weapon. I've been doing this for like ten years or something. But would there have been the memory on a C64 game to actually have it that in depth and have it change um, over the course of good question. like three minutes or whatever? There's the question, isn't it? A tape game. Mm, see, I'd argue it would take half, if not more, of the kind of memory needed. So you'd, you just, it would just be the one song on the game, wouldn't it? I and the game itself mm. would be pretty naff, but... The music will be banging, so it's all right. <laughs> yeah, but people would just play, you know, obviously let the game load after two hours later just to hear that tune, right? I mean, you know, I, I, I do really like this album. I think, you know, I'm, I'm kind of late to the chip tune scene. I, I don't really know a great deal about it, but I love retro game music. Come on, let's be honest. It is like, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. I mean, like, I could imagine the, like, original the first version that you played as a 16-bit soundtrack? Yeah, yeah, that's what they've done. I mean, you know, you've taken two supposedly lesser compu- you know, computers and consoles and you created something that does actually sound, sound 16-bit, but it just goes to show what the, SID, what the SID chip can do. So how many channels are there, or does it work differently on 16-bit? It's three, oh, oh 16-bit, because they've got um, frequency modulation. I think they had, well, I want to say like, like four or five channels. I've not got it in my notes, but they had, they, you know, they, they're not, then obviously definitely one as limited as the Game Boy, <clears throat> just making like waveforms on one channel. So like the three plus two here is basically the same as... Could be. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe. Maybe they've emulated 16-bit music in a chips tune kind of style. Do they, do, do we, do we deduct marks for that? No. Surely not. No. It's not deducting marks either way. <laughs> like it's just, I'm curious about how it works. Yeah, yeah, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, I don't want to bore you guys with all the tunes on here, obviously, but this is a good album, and I think you can get it from Bandcamp, so just Google 8 bit Web, and you get it from Bandcamp for, for a mere $5. So that, that is a bit of a bargain. I tell you what, um, I'm going to play you my least favorite tune Ooh. on the album, Ooh. I think, just to give you a bit of an idea. So I like I like all of the songs on this album, but this is my least favorite it's called they called it nintechnoid which gives you a bit of an idea as to what this may sound like and to think we were ragging on uh, adrian last week for being a nerd nah. Zelda. <laughs> nerd. we love being nerds come on nerds we are nerds <laughs> anyway this is nintechnoid from maybe a weapon have a listen You know what that sounded to me like? Mm. Do you remember when you were a kid and there were like kind of dance compilation albums? Yes. And like, do you remember the ones that didn't have chart hits on? Yes. They were all people you'd never heard of? Yeah. It sounded like oh, no. something that would have been on one of those. Yeah, yeah. It's not a compliment. No, a oh, bit Rob. harsh, a bit harsh. It's not a horrible, it's not a harsh kind of thing. <laughs> it's, it's, not a, a it's, harsh. it's not a horrible insult. Mm. 
It sounds like music that could have been produced like 25 yeah. years ago. Yeah. I still like that tune. I think it's a bit of a homage to Metroid and such, but it's yeah, it, that that is my that is my least favorite track on yeah. the album. I preferred the first one. I thought the first one. Was oh yeah, Dungeon Crawler Baller. I mean, that's you know that that. What's your is that your personal favorite dungeon? I'd say so. Yeah, I'd say that and Electronic Blips. I quite like Electronic Blips. If you ever guys <laughs> gonna listen to it afterwards, I'm gonna make you guys listen to the album anyway. Um, but yeah, so you know, I think yeah, this is you know Chip Tune is out there. I think hopefully I've given people at home a bit of something to think about. You know, why not give this a go? You can get, you know, we're talking about making music on your NES. It's called MIDI NES. I don't know what how much the cartridge is, but you literally just whack it into your NES or Retro Trio, uh, and yeah. you can start synchron. You can you can start sequencing these kind of tunes. It is, you know, it's like the tracker kind of thing. So like like Optimed and all those cool those cool Amiga programs I used to use back in the yeah, day. Remember, yeah. Sound Tracker. It is just a grid. And, you know, you've got certain different codes for different sounds. Have a play with it. And you can make your own 8-bit, 4-bit music. I mean, that's pretty... Come on. That's pretty amazing. How would you get a Game Boy, though? How would you get that going? You, the same thing. I think there's a cartridge oh, that there? you just put... I think, like, Compute Her, who is Michelle. So, 8-bit weapon are Seth and Michelle. Um, Michelle is Compute Her. So, she is... You know, she does her own solo stuff as well. What's Which the general's name? Which, sir? What's, uh, Steve. Uh, Seth. Oh, Seth. He's Compute Seth and Michelle. Him. Compute him and compute her, but you know. So, and I think she just does stuff straight off the straight off the Game Boy. So you've got the sequencer um, programs, and then you can do that in a live setting, or you can do that in a you know in a studio setting. And there, you know we gotta we gotta spread the word now. You know, give it a listen. Yeah. Are you are you tempted to have a go yourself one day, Dylan? Have interest. You know how much I love making tunes on the Amiga, man. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't make me dig around for those tapes because I, I I will dig around for them. <laughs> you would as well. Actually, actually, I've just remembered something. I have just remembered something. My A twelve hundred is still working, and I still have the discs. I still have the discs actually from when I composed everything. Wow. So as long as those floppies haven't uh, like. Um, develop fault or anything I could maybe actually bring bring those tunes back to life <laughs> and put them up on the site and put them up on the site so this time next year you'll be touring and playing your music to hundreds or even thousands of people thousands of people I'm telling you <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah I mean you know if any if any of you guys at home know a bit more about chiptune than us then please let us know I hope that I suppose the main purpose is for guys who don't really know about it as a, a little bit of an a little bit of an introduction. Yeah, no, I, I did appreciate that, and I thought that takes skill. We we're not trying to have a joke here. I think that was some great art. You know, that you've got to be good at your craft to get that sort of music. Another thing, actually, like you had a ZX Spectrum, didn't you? I did, yeah. Back in the day, I did. All of that music was made just using a blither. One person programming a blither. That's mad when you think about how it. How on earth, like some of those tunes? How on earth did they even do that? I just, it just it's staggering. It is absolutely staggering how this stuff is done. So you have to respect you have to respect the the talent, I suppose. And it uh, certainly wasn't a blip in the industry, was it? Oh god. <laughs> there he is. There he is. I want to see more of this. There he is. Any any final thoughts, Rob? Um, I think five dollars for a seven track album's okay. Yeah. If you're into it. I think so. I think it's a good price for a good mm. album. Um, I think you guys should follow 8-Bit <coughs> Weapon on Twitter and such. Well, I actually, I have a question. Go on. Is there much of a live scene in London or where we are? They have played London, I believe, actually. Um, I think, especially with people like Rob Hubbard doing his recent Kickstarter and things, I think there is... He was talking about, like, Royal Albert Hall. I mean, there is... Are you <laughs> Rob just gave me an odd look, but it is something that... Yeah, we, we love... I want to say what we what we'd prefer. Would we prefer to have original music in this kind of style, or would it be some kind of yeah. orchestra based like, on tunes that we used to like love? Like Tommy Tallarico, when he he tra- he's, he's in London soon, he wants to bring his his music live. Hmm. What both? I would so be there. Remember <laughs> Terminator? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. It, Terminator. They're just different. They're different gigs, aren't they? I know they're similar. They're, they have similarities, but you know they both have their place, surely. Yeah. yeah yeah, I think in two very different audiences. I mean, yeah. obviously Keith, like he wasn't here, but I think he probably leans more toward the 
like the uh, high upgraded versions, the old stuff. Yeah. Maybe I do too, but I think like I can see kind of the appeal of the other one. Yeah. Kind of going into the actual cultural bit of it and how it felt. Can I hear that? And yeah. Yeah. you know, like the kind of Scott Pilgrimy, IT crowdy kind of like that uh, sonic aesthetic. If you want. Yeah. To. And making original music, I think you know you're not you're not resting your laurels. You're, you're bringing something new to the table, and that has to be commended, surely. Definitely. I think I think Chiptune does deserve commendation. <clears throat> I think um, people need to educate me about a lot of what I've said <laughs> about about um, waveform generators and sawtooth and triangle. <laughs> but you know, please tell us how it's done. We need to be educated. I wouldn't mind having a little go myself one day. Thanks for listening to today's podcast. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you want to get in touch regarding this week's episode or anything else. You can tweet us at Arcade Attack UK, at Keith Barlow 82 and at Arcade underscore Adriano. We're also on Facebook at facebook.com slash Arcade Attack UK. Please check out our website at arcadeattack.co.uk for lots of retro gaming goodness, interviews, reviews, features, top tens, etc. And you can also find all our previous podcasts there. Our podcasts are available to stream from the website and are available to download for free from Stitcher, Podbean and iTunes, where you can also leave us a review and a rating, which we would really, really appreciate. So until next time, take care and we'll speak to you soon.